Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's Washington State Archives webinar on transferring paper records to the archives. My name is Scott Sackett. I'm the Electronic Records Management Consultant for Central Washington. I'm based at our Ellensburg facility. And uh, right here, right now, it is, it is snowing rather hard. So uh, it looks like a winter wonderland out there. Today, we'll be covering a number of topics uh, having to do with transferring paper records to the archives. First of all, we'll define what archival transfer means and what are the steps involved in that. Also, what records can be transferred to the archives? The archives aren't just a storage facility for records. They're not a record center, as it were, something like that. And also, we'll talk about the timing of the transfer. <clears throat> Excuse me, when in a records life cycle you can transfer the uh, records to the archives. We'll give you some guidelines on how to start the transfer process, the information you'll need to have to start the process, and uh, whom you should contact. And we'll talk a little bit as well about preparing the records for transfer, uh, what you need to do, and whom to ask if you, if you have questions about preparing the records. Say, do you need to put them in boxes, or what order do they need to be in, that sort of thing. And then lastly, we'll talk a little bit about the documentation. How how records are created that document uh, this, this transfer of records so that your agency knows where those records went and can show, if someone asks for them later, you know where to point them. Now, archival transfer, what we're talking about when we use that term, is a permanent physical and legal transfer of historically important records to, to the state archives. It's not just a physical transfer, like if you were storing something in a, uh, in a rental unit or something like that. This is a physical and legal transfer. The archives takes custody of the records and um, pledges to preserve those records and provide access to them in accordance with the laws of the state of Washington from that point forward. Um, Basically, as long as your agency has met its retention requirements before transferring those records, that, that is a, from here on, uh, that, that's, that is the archive's responsibility to make sure that those records are available. So it's not temporary storage. You wouldn't be checking records in and out, that sort of thing. And since this is a permanent transfer, there are a number of uh, parts of the revised code of Washington and the Washington Administrative Code that authorize this process. And I list those here at the bottom on the slide. In terms of the records that are eligible for appraisal and transfer, generally only 5% or so of records, of an agency's records, are considered to be archival, are eligible for this kind of transfer. The other 95% or so are what we call non-archival records. And when those reach the end of their retention requirement, those records can be destroyed. What we call disposition for those records would mean destroying them. But for the 5% that are archival, that means that if your agency doesn't want to keep those any longer, then you need to contact the archives for the next step. And you can see right here on, this is actually taken from part of the state government general records retention schedule, you can see that the two of the three record series that are listed on the retention schedule here show an archival designation. Both of them actually are showing archival appraisal required, you'll see here. So those, once they reach the end of their retention, like this middle one here says retained for six years after disposition of parcel. Once your agency has, just, has no longer owns that land parcel, at that point, their next step would be to contact the archives and see if these records, this documentation, needs to go to the archives for permanent preservation. These land appraisals at the bottom, you see they're six years after date of document, but at that point, these wouldn't go to the archives. They say destroy. So the records retention schedules that are used by your agency and that are found on the archives website will show you in the, in the retention schedules these, where these records uh, need to go, what records would need to go to the archives or at least be considered for transfer to the archives. If you have any questions about which retention schedule or schedules to use, uh, you can contact the Records Management Help Desk. Uh, my colleagues and I uh, are monitoring that throughout the day, uh, every, every business day, and you can get an answer from us that way. 
Also, if you need more guidance on how to use the retention schedules, I recommend that you take uh, some of our other trainings, such as the webinar on the basics of records management, or there's also one on uh, re demystifying records retention schedules. Now, there are two different types of designations within that archival designation. We looked at one there that said archival appraisal required, but first let's look at the other designation, archival permanent retention. A good example of these would be for our city council or for a uh, board of county commissioners or some other sort of governing board. The meeting records for those types of entities are considered to be archival permanent retention records. The minutes, the ordinances that the agency creates them, the resolutions, those are key records, uh, historically important records, representing what issues were considered uh, and discussed by, by, those, uh, by those boards and what decisions were made. Uh, those are ones that the, either your agency or the archives is going to be retaining those records permanently. Uh, we don't need to appraise those to determine, well, was it an interesting meeting? Do those need to come in? Or can you toss them? No. These records, one of us at least, well, one of our entities is going to be keeping them forever. So if you have these records and they've met their listed retention on the, uh, on the retention schedule, then you'd contact us to make arrangements for transfer of these records in their entirety. So. That includes not just minutes, ordinances, resolutions, but say sign-up sheets for those who may have provided testimony at those meetings. Uh, if you have audio or video recordings of those meetings, those would fall under this series as well. The other, other designation that we looked at uh, briefly before was archival appraisal required. Another way to consider that or to interpret that is potentially archival. All or some or none of those records uh, may, be, may have value such that they need to be retained permanently uh, from, from now until end of Republic and then some. But uh, we need to have a look, archive staff need to have a look and appraise those records for their historical value to make that determination. Um, there are some cases where the archives may transfer all of the records for later appraisal. Very often, though, we will appraise the records at the time you contact us. If you say we have these, for example, advisory board uh, meeting minutes uh, and, and resolutions, those sorts of things, we get a look at those, make arrangements with you to appraise them. Um, but in some cases, for expediency's sake, we might actually say let's transfer them now. We will appraise them further later and determine which may need to be retained uh, permanently. One thing to know on this, that records that we appraise and that we do not select for transfer or for permanent preservation, those effectively become non-archival records. Um, if you have a bunch of records and you contact us, they're archival appraisal required, and we say, OK, these couple of boxes need to come to the archives. These others do not need to come to the archives, but they've met their retention. Then those that we say don't need to come in, they're not archival records. You can go ahead and destroy those records. We recommend that you document that destruction, but you have done everything you need to do with those records. You kept them the necessary amount of time. You contacted the archives and gave us the opportunity to appraise them for possible transfer. And we said, hey, thanks, but no thanks. All the uh, requirements have been met. Another tool that you can use within the retention schedules to identify what records you may have that, that have this designation, at the end of every records retention schedule are a number of indexes. There's a keyword index, there's an index by disposition authority number, and there's also one by archival and permanent records. So for example, this one is taken from the August 2016 version of the law enforcement records retention schedule. And that one actually, just, just last week, that was updated to version 7.2, by the way. But in this version, 7.1 that I'm showing here, this is a list of all of the uh, record series that, that have this designation. So rather than having to go through each page and go which ones are archival, which ones are not, this gives you a list of all those and on what page you can find them. In terms of the timing of transferring these records, uh, I, I mentioned before that you need to keep them 
for the length of the retention period that's indicated in the retention schedules. So as this says, normally a record must have met its minimum retention requirement as listed in the schedules. In this case, you see it was retained for six years after decision not to proceed. Once that six-year countdown uh, has elapsed, then you go to the next step. In this case, it is appraisal required. So you contact us for appraisal. There are some circumstances, though, where you can transfer records before that time. One thing in particular, one circumstance in particular, is if you are scanning those records and you're following what are called the, the scan and toss requirements. Um, scan and toss, if you've taken one of our other, uh, one of our other webinars, the one on, on scanning and tossing records, that those requirements enable your agency to legally scan a paper record and keep the digital version in place of the paper version for the remain, remainder of its retention period. And while you can't scan and toss archival records, meaning scanning them and throwing them away, if you're scanning them to that standard, you can scan them and have them transferred or have them appraised early. Um, this is a, the scan and toss requirements are a self-evaluative process. You look at those and determine whether your procedures for scanning the records and for managing the records once they're scanned, if those meet these requirements. If so, your agency can transfer the archival source records, those paper records, once they've been scanned and verified. That standard, uh, if you're not sure where to find it, there's a link uh, on this page to both the standard itself and an advice sheet that talks specifically about scanning and transferring archival paper records. If there are, are, are there any questions at this point, any questions or concerns that uh, anyone would like to bring up? Looks like there's one person typing the question. While, uh, while it looks like Kim is typing that question, uh, I'll talk a little bit about this slide. One question that comes up frequently is, do I need to retain a copy? If I'm transferring these originals, do I, uh, or, and the records have met their retention requirements, say it says six years after end of fiscal year, for example, and, uh, and it's been, that period has, uh, has elapsed, if the records have met that requirement but re remain in frequent and active use, if those are still active records for you, a couple of things you might want to consider. Um, consider creating an access copy prior to transfer. That, that copy would you'd only need to keep around for as long as you had an agency need for it, you know, an access need. Or you might consider in some cases delaying the transfer of those records until those records become effectively inactive, where your need for access to them is rare. And if you're unsure about uh, whether either of these things are the case, you can certainly get in touch with your appropriate archives contact and we can discuss that with you. We're happy to, to help you in making that determination. Let's see, and Kim had asked the question here, if a committee meeting is available online, can you destroy the tape? Um, Let's see here. And then if you upload all committee agendas and minutes to our online system, can we destroy the physical copies of the agendas and minutes? If your official record of, of the, uh, of the uh, meeting that takes place is a paper document, I mean, say, for example, if your minutes are not considered official until they have a pen and ink signature or for your ordinances or resolutions, something like that, that in that case, that paper copy is considered to be the primary record. So if you're scanning that signed record and are uploading uh, those to your online system, what you've done is you've made an access copy available. You would still want with those uh, paper records, the paper originals, to contact the archives uh, rather than going ahead and just destroying those. Um, that said, I mean, you can be doing that scanning shortly after the meeting, and you could discuss with the archives transferring those paper originals or having them appraised right away. That's, that's fine, but we don't want you to consider those a secondary copy that can just be thrown away, because again, archival records, the, uh, you're never going to be disposing of those, throwing those away without specific authorization to do so from, from the archives. 
And you said that the same does go for if you have a tape or if you have a, a digital recording of the meeting that is considered part of the official meeting record uh, for retention purposes. So even if that recording is available online, you wouldn't want to destroy uh, the original. Again, get in touch with us. And we'll talk about that a little more in a later slide. Excellent question. And if you've got others, uh, Kim or anyone else, please feel free to, to ask those whenever they, whenever they come up. This is actually the other slide that I was talking about. Um, if you have scanned, uh, if your paper records are the original, if there's pen and ink signature that makes them official, so that the paper version is, the, is considered the official record, as it were, the documentation of the decision, the, the, uh, the point at which the record becomes official. If you've digitized those in compliance with the scan and toss standard, um, let us know when we are appraising the record that there is both the paper original and a scanned copy of that original. Because sometimes we may opt for the paper alone. Sometimes we may actually opt to transfer the scanned version alone. And sometimes we may actually opt to transfer both of those. The paper version would go to the appropriate uh, regional archives, or if it's a state agency record, would go to the state archives uh, branch in Olympia. For the digital version, it would go to our digital archives facility over in Cheney. And we do have uh, other webinars. Actually, there's going to be one just coming up in the next, actually a couple coming up in the next couple, couple of weeks that talk about the process for transferring digital versions of archival records. Another question that comes up very often is, are agencies required to transfer? The first thing to note is, in response to that is that the retention schedules are retention minimums. If the records retention requirement for a particular record series is retained for six years after end of calendar year and then transferred to the archives for appraisal, say, that's the minimum length of time that you need to keep that record before your agency is no longer obligated to, to keep a copy. You can always keep it longer than that. And so in that sense, you are not required to transfer the records. You can keep the records at your agency as long as you want past the retention requirement. The thing to keep in mind, though, is if at some point in the future you're still holding on to those records that are past the requirement and you finally decide, you know what, we need the space or we're not accessing these enough to justify keeping them around. At that point, the thing to keep in mind is the archives is the only other authorized custodian for those records. Um, say there was a local historical society or a library or an individual that said they were interested in those records. They, would, they are not authorized custodians of these records. It needs to be either your agency that's keeping archival records or the, or the state archives. So if you do have these records and your agency has decided, all right, we don't want to retain these any longer, they are archival, the requirements have been met, one thing you want to make sure of is that you're working with your agency's designated records officer or records contact. Uh, state agencies are required to have a designated records officer. It's something we recommend for local government agencies, but it's not an out-and-out -out statutory requirement to have a records retention designated officer. Very often, if you're listening to this session, it's quite likely that uh, that you may be the records contact within your agency or for your department within your agency. But if you're not, it's good to ask around, find out who that person is. And working with that person, identify those records that have met their retention requirement and are considered archival. And you'd want to confirm in that case, do we want to continue retaining these records at the agency? or are we ready for the, the appraisal and or transfer step and involving the archives at that point? There are a few pieces of information that we need to facilitate the appraisal and transfer process. So when you get in touch with the archives, and I'll show you who, who to contact in, in just, a, just a couple of slides here, this information helps us to get a kind of good 10,000 foot view of the, of the records. First of all, what are the record series that you need to have appraised? We're talking there about a brief description of the records and the disposition authority numbers, or DANs, that uh, you find in the retention schedule 
uh, for those particular record series. So say you're a law enforcement agency and what you have is case files um, for for homicides that are solved. Um, here's the, the DAN for that, LE 2010-062. And in that case, I believe those need to be retained for 20 years after close of case. And then uh, they I forget whether they're appraisal required or whether they're archival permanent retention. So in this case, say that 20 years has elapsed. You give us the, the record series description in the DAN. Also, what's the volume of records? Um, is this a few bound volumes? Is this a cubic foot, which is about like a banker box size of, of records? Uh, do you have these in file cabinets or something like that? Just give us an idea of the physical volume of the records. Also, what date range do the records cover? Um, these may be records where you've transferred other, um, these records from other periods from your agency to the archives before, and so these may extend the, the time span that we, you know, for which we have records from your agency. These may fill in a gap sometimes uh, in archival records. So it's helpful for us to have that date range information. Lastly, and something that some agencies don't, don't necessarily think of before transferring, we want to know, is there anything within these records that is disclosure exempt um, according to a particular statute? For example, if there's something in uh, Chapter 42.56 RCW, the Public Records Act, that says that might say these records contain social security numbers, for example, and those are something that that needs to be uh, that needs to be withheld. You, know, you can provide, provide the rest of the record, but social security numbers for individuals need to be um, those do, do need to be kept from uh, being released in this case. If you've got records that in their entirety or in part are disclosure exempt, please let us know which records and what the statutory authority. Uh, is for that exemption. The statute says that the archives can and will carry those exemptions across, you know, after the after the transfer. But we do need to know about them in either to in order to carry those out. So if you've got that that basic information, those three or four pieces of information. Uh, you can contact your branch archivist to arrange appraisal and or transfer. Um, if you're a local government agency, you're working with one of the uh, regional branches that's listed here. Um, is there anyone here, ra raise your hand if you are not sure which region, uh, which regional bl branch applies to you. Is there anyone who's not quite sure? Okay, I see Jamie, uh, you've got your hand up. Where are you located, Jamie? Ah, Jamie, it looks like you are at the Board of Pilotage Commissioners, is that correct? Okay, let's see. That is, you are a state agency, so hold on for just a second. This is for this, this page is for local government, so you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be working with one of the regional branches. Gotcha, in Seattle with the Board of Pilotage Commissioners. Got it. Okay, so is there anyone else who, who does not, is not sure which regional branch they would use? So in this case, for example, Central Region, there are nine counties of, of Central Washington, basically running from Okanagan up north down to Klickitat County and the Tri-Cities down south and everything in between. Uh, that, that would make up the Central Region. You'd get in touch in that case with Bridget. If you're a state agency, um, like in, in your case, Jamie, the person you contact is actually the Acquisitions Archivist, who is located in, in Olympia at our State Archives branch there. Uh, it's co-located with our Southwest Regional Branch. But Molly Rooney, the Acquisitions Archivist, is your appropriate contact for that. You've got her uh, phone number and her email address right here. And again, it would be the same information you're supplying to her as we listed on that earlier slide. Description of the records, the applicable disposition authority number or numbers, um, volume of the records, date range, and if there's anything that's disclosure exempt. Uh, by statute. In some cases, these might be records that have been sitting around for a while, not always in a clean, well-organized location. Um, sometimes you may have like rusty staples that are holding the records together, something like that. 
uh, if you've got a situation like that, circumstances where you look at these records and go, okay, is this something that's going to pose a problem or pose a challenge for preserving these records? Just let your archivist know. One of the contacts that's on uh, one of those two previous slides, let that person know, and they will discuss those issues with you and determine what the most appropriate course of action is. Generally, staples, for example, are not going to be something that has to be taken out unless they are something that, that poses an active threat to the record. So rusty staples, uh, or you see discoloration around those staples, it might be something we need to either address once those records come in, or we may talk with you about it, whether it's possible for someone to remove those prior to, to transfer. But we'll figure out an appropriate course of action with you. And in some cases, uh, in situations like this, we may ask you to take a couple of sample photos showing your concerns with the records. Uh, send us those so we can you know, really have eyes on them while making this decision. Often with the appraisal process, very often this is done on site at your agency, but sometimes we can do part or all of the appraisal via via email, perhaps with phone calls, and perhaps looking at some sample photos of the records or scans. Another question we get quite often is, should I box everything up first? Or if it's in, say, I don't know, say you've been using liquor boxes or something like that, some sort of, you know, not not official box for uh, for holding holding records. Do you need to rebox those before contacting the archives? Really, it depends um, on on certain circumstances. Part of the question will be: Are the records archival permanent retention or archival appraisal required? If you've got, for example, 30 drawers in file cabinets of archival appraisal required records. We're not going to insist that you put those into archival boxes before we come and appraise those, because we may appraise them and decide to only take one or two cubic feet uh, worth out of those records. And we don't want you to go to unnecessary effort in order to do that. Very often, we would appraise those records right where they are in the, in the uh, uh, file cabinets. So yeah, in some, in some situations like that, it may be preferable for us to appraise those records in their current storage environment. But again, let us know what the situation is with the records, um, whether they're in boxes already, that sort of thing, and we will factor that in in how to proceed. Now, in preparing records for transfer, uh, we'll in, in, with the questions that you might be posing before, we'll talk a little bit about these issues. But in general, when we talk about preparing the records for transfer, a few things need to happen. Um, if the record series are, say, mixed in together, if there are non-archival documents, things like receipts or something like that, mixed in with archival records like minutes, uh, we would ask you to remove the non-archival documents. And organize the records by by record series. So if you've got annual reports and governing board meeting minutes and resolutions, things like that, you don't want them all lumped together. If you've got records that are loose paper, uh, ideally having those in folders, um, again, within different record series, labeling those folders clearly and accurately so we know what's within those. And you don't want to jam pack those folders or any other types of records into the into the archives boxes. Um, you want to have them as, as you know, le loosely packed so you can get a hand in there without um, without having to you know, stuff <laughs> stuff your hand in there. We also ask you to fill out a content list, and one of the the handout that you received in in email this morning, along with uh, the copy of the slides, that's the. Uh, content list and transmittal record that we're, we're talking about here. In some cases, we may uh, will ask you to fill out the content list at your end. Sometimes though, when, especially when we're appraising the records first, we may do, create that record on the fly uh, when we're at your agency performing the appraisal, for example. So this is one of those things, again, where discuss it with your archivist. The other thing to make sure, and, and you've likely let us know this already, uh, when you're getting in touch with us about the appraisal, but make sure that any confidential or restricted records are identified. 
And there are a number, number of ways to do that. Some agencies, if there are, say, particular case files that are confidential or restricted, they might put those in, for example, a red folder instead of a, a regular uh, folder and list on it that it is you know, restricted or confidential and list the appropriate uh, statute that makes those confidential, that sort of thing. Some things to avoid. You know, the previous slide was more like best practices. This is worst practices. Uh, don't just use the forearm method of, of filling a box, just taking your forearm and going across the desk and putting the box at the end so everything falls in it. Um, along with that, don't put uh, non-archival records in the box or, you know, occasionally we'll come across boxes that were transferred for later appraisal and we'll find, you know, staplers or family photos or things along those lines. Those, those things do not need to, uh, do not need to and should not come in with, with the records transfer. I mentioned don't pack the box too tight. Um, also, it really helps to have, say, if you've got folders in there or volumes of records, like multiple bound, bound volumes in there, have those all facing the same way. Don't have, you know, say, some records that are facing the front of the box, others facing the back or the side or something like that. Some other things, it's, it's best if you don't use acronyms or often uh, office numbers or agency speak, agency jargon. Um, if you do use something that's an acronym, identify for us clearly somewhere what that acronym stands for. Because one of the things you're doing here is preparing these records not just for the archives, but for future users. Um, and if we have the information, the context for those records, we can carry that forward. But So you're making sure we've got that information from the get-go. If you're ready to transfer records and you need boxes uh, for them, let us know. Let your appropriate archives contact know, and we can provide you with the necessary archival boxes at no cost. Um, in some situations, though, there are uh, records that the agency might be boxing up and eventually transferring those. Or they might even be long-term non-archival records, uh, and you need and you want to have boxes for those. You can certainly, in those situations, purchase uh, boxes for record storage at the agency. You can purchase those from us. In that case, you can contact the State Records Center, which is part of the Washington State Archives, at recordcenter at sos.wa.gov. And both state agencies and local agencies can purchase uh, boxes from, uh, from the Record Center facility. I'd mentioned before the, the second handout that uh, went out in the email this morning, the records transmittal and box content list. If we're having you fill out that, that list, some important things to do, make sure that you clearly identify who the records officer or designated records contact is. Also identify your agency and if it's a particular department or office within the agency, what that is. Um, some of the information that you have given us before for the appraisal process or notifying us about the records, things like the dates that apply to the records, the disposition authority number or numbers, the series title, you know, description of the records, those are all things that will go on the transmittal as well in this box content list. Um, again, what you're doing here is creating what we call a finding aid for the records. This will be, be part of a researcher's means of identifying whether the record they're looking for is in box one or box five or box 23, um, knowing that if they know that box one is 1905 to 1923, they're not going to go looking in there for stuff from the 1970s. Uh, again, on this, this is a place where you would uh, note and explain any confidential or restricted records. So if there are selected files throughout that are marked as confidential or restricted, you can describe it in that way. If there are entire boxes that are confidential or restricted records, you can identify by the, you know, by the box that's numbered in there. And again, let us know what the specific statutory authority is for that, not just say, you don't want to just say these are confidential under Chapter 42.56 RCW. That, that doesn't give us enough detail. This is a snapshot of that tra transmittal and box content list. Uh, you have a, a similar document in your handouts. And you'll see, especially for local governments, uh, as part of the process in this case, we will um, 
get a signature from both the appropriate official in your office and from a representative from the archives. And this transfer of custody agreement at the bottom is it's just saying this is what, you know, that your agency is transferring these archival records in accordance with the law and the archives is agreeing to preserve these in accordance with the laws of the state of Washington. And, and they remain public records, uh, they will be preserved in perpetuity and uh, we will provide access to them in, accord, in accordance with those laws. Let's see, is the electronic version of the archives, records, transmittal, and box content list available? Kim, yes it is actually, and I will give you a link to that. Uh, we've just got a few slides to go. Uh, after the, the last slide, I will, I will post a, a link to that up there. Thank you. Uh, another thing to look at there is for both state and local governments, there is a page that will link, uh, that you can find a link for on the general records management page for state or local agencies. It's called How to Transfer Archival Records. Um, that links to several advice sheets, like the ones you see here, preparing paper records for archival transfer, how to fill out a records transmittal and box content list, a link to that transmittal and box content list, that sort of thing. Also, there is um, there are several steps in assembling an archives box. So in addition to the instructions that are printed on the box, for those of you who are more visual learners, there is uh, there is a short uh, video uh, in the style of an old, say, you know, 19 1940s uh, ephemeral film on how to assemble an archives box. So the research page, uh, the resource page, where to find it? Actually, this is the link, uh, Kim, that you were that you were asking for. If you, um, if you're a local government, you'd use this one on the top. A state government agency, you use the one on the bottom. But that will uh, take you to this page that includes a link to the uh, electronic version of the transmittal and box content list. Lastly, if you are wondering what records, if any, have already been transferred by your agency to the archives, there are two ways to get this information. Um, one way is to contact your acquisitions archivist or branch archivist um, and they can give you an up-to-date uh, an up-to-date printout of what records have been transferred from what years, what disposition authority numbers, that sort of thing. Um, often, well, your agency should have received when it's transferred records in the past, it would receive a copy of the transmittal and box content list. But if there were a situation where you couldn't put your hands on those records, we do have an agency, we, we have an archives copy here, so we can, we can supply you with that if necessary. Another way to get this information, though, is to go onto the archives website, click on the appropriate branch or on the state archives branch if you're a state agency, and then on that page, click on view a listing of the blank, you know, say central region or state archives collections. And you'll see here what it will print out is, what will show on the screen is records groups, so it'll list kind of at the highest level what the agency is, you see here, you know, Office of the State Auditor, Anacortes Municipal Government, Bellingham Municipal Government, etc. You click something there, in this case we've clicked Anacortes Municipal Government, and it will open up the different offices within that record group for which we have records. Apparently for Anacortes Municipal Government we only have, ref have records from the city clerk. If you click on that, then what you'll get is a list of the different record series that we have from that particular office of that agency. And then you click on any of those and it will give you a, a some key information about those records down here. So for example, I clicked on city ordinances and it shows Anacortes Municipal Government, city clerk, city ordinances, what dates are covered within those records, and some other key information, some basic description down below, that sort of thing. And also, this is a means, whether it is someone at your agency that's trying to find out more about these records, or say a researcher, there's a little button here that says request information. Um, if you want to get information on that record series, this will create uh, an email that, a message that you can send to the archives requesting additional information on this record. And you can add some text saying what is it that you're, what is the information you're trying to find, that sort of thing.
So that's the that's the end of this session. Um, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them now. I'm going to take a quick moment here just to turn off the the recording, but uh, just I'd also like to say thank you for taking the time to to participate in today's training, and I look forward to seeing you in other trainings. Thanks very much, and have a great day.